Hi! Welcome to this part of my solo campaign featuring From the Ashes. If you haven't seen the other parts of this solo campaign and an explanation on how I am running things, please check out the playlist in the description below. So, with the intent of killing every cultist on site, as determined by the previous check, Corbus makes his way to the west balcony. I made a roll and I obtained Enslave Malevolent Father. My interpretation is that this result didn't apply to the situation, so Corbus proceeded normally. As he approached the balcony, three cultists were ready to rush at him. They win initiative and begin their race towards him with their spears. I made a roll using the Flex AI guidebook to see what tactics Corbus was going to employ. I set things up so that he would be a leader, solo blooded, with the context that he is more capable than his enemies and I obtained ability Major Surge. Corbus pulls out his wand of fireballs, spending a charge to incinerate the cultists. They are cut up in the radius of the fireball and they all die. Corbus proceeds upstairs. Corbus arrives at a square room with a pool of the same disgusting green goo he saw in the ground floor. Around the pool, he notices four curtains on the walls. Each at every cardinal point. I made a roll to see what Corbus was going to do, and I obtained Divide Treacherous Knowledge. My interpretation is this. Suspecting treachery, Corbus proceeds to cut all the curtains with his sword. The resulting tears divided the curtains at different angles. Behind the curtains, there are four alcoves. That is, behind each curtain, there is an alcove with a wheel on the wall. Above each wheel, there is an engraved symbol on the wall. There is a symbol of an eagle in the east, a cat in the south, a snake in the west, and a sword in the north. Corbus meditates on this newfound knowledge. I made a roll, and I obtained antagonized, defiant advice. And Corbus decides that although he wishes to defy his antagonists, he lacks information and will look for someone with advice on what to do with the wheels. Corbus approaches the northern stairway and continues his way up. This is interesting because these wheels could actually could have destroyed the entire pyramid, but you need to activate them in a certain order. There was also a secret door in one of the alcoves, but because I didn't obtain any result that indicated that Corbus was going to look for secret doors, he misses that treasure. Then I made a roll to see how Corbus would proceed. I obtained Fail Orderly Lookout. In order not to fail, Corbus proceeds at an orderly pace, looking carefully at his surroundings. He enters a room with a large pool at its center, with the same viscous green fluid. There is a swirling black vortex floating above the pool. He also notices three lumps under the surface of the slimy liquid. I made a roll and I obtained corrupt, fair tension. Corbus is certain that the vortex is a source of corruption on what would otherwise be a fair land, perhaps. He tenses up, and I made a roll, and I obtained Ponder Amicable Truth, and he hesitates for a moment. He ponders if there is some amicable solution, some truth that he is overlooking, some way of solving things in a less chaotic way. Distracted with his thoughts, he fails to notice three mummified corpses rising from the pool in front of him. Those were the lumps. Behind him, a door opens up, and a novice man, in ceremonial robes, steps into the room. She sent you to kill me, didn't she? This is obviously Gregory. Due to his carelessness, Corbus's attitude on the attitude tracker shifts a bit towards indifferent. Corbus wins initiative this time. The context is leader, solo, cornered, because Corbus is surrounded, that is behind him, there is Gregory, and in front of him, a bit closer to him, are the mummies. I use the context where the enemies are more powerful than Corbus. I obtain the result of main attack, minor lull, frontline. So Corbus actually panics for a moment as he is surrounded and closes in towards the closest mummy, but he is not able to attack at this turn. The closest mummy tries to claw into Corbus's body, but his armor deflects the blow while the other mummies shamble towards Corvus. Gregory chants some arcane words 
and he sends out this swarm of spectral hands that latch onto Corvus because Corvus failed his saving throw. I made a roll to see if Corvus would change tactics after this. I used the same context but with Overwhelmed and I obtained Use Defend. Corvus drops his two-handed sword and pulls out his shield. The closest mummy attacks once more, but the shield blocks its claws. The other two approach and slam their fists against Corvus, but his shield and armor protect Corvus. And this is quite lucky because the spectral hands are applying penalties to both Corvus's attack and defense, or armor class. Gregory takes this time to pull out a knife and moves a bit closer towards Corvus. Then Corvus pulls out his one-handed sword and injures one of the mummies. Corvus frantically tries to block and parry the mummy's assault, but one claw gets through, nicking him in the shoulder. Gregory tries to dominate Corvus, using his voice and his mental power, but Corvus is too strong, he is successful in his saving throw and resists. Corvus counters the attack of the mummies and misses an attack, but the mummy that got wounded moved a bit too close, a bit too careless, so Corvus takes this chance to do a quick cut and damages the mummy. The exchange results in one mummy getting past Corvus and striking his head, got past his shield. Gregory tries to dominate Corvus once more, but his will is too strong another successful saving throw. Corvus barely manages to stab the injured mummy, but he's pummeled bad. The mummies are just raining blows upon him. Gregory advances, unsure if he should step in to finish off Corvus. I made a roll to see if Corvus was going to change tactics considering he is quite wounded. I set up Corvus as leader, solo, relentless. I obtained attack main, major surge. Corvus makes a desperate attack and misses, that is, he was putting some bonuses on his attack and now he gets a penalty to his armor class and his flank is now exposed. However, he was in luck. The three mummies were unable to get past his shield and his quick reflexes as well. He miraculously managed to avoid all of the attacks using improvised jolts and parries and actually managed to decapitate the damaged mummy with a quick sword swipe. This is because the mummy fumbled. Gregory saw this as a distraction and stepped in, trying to backstab Corvus, but Corvus moved his hip to the side just in time. A few seconds after that mummy dropped, the other two jerked awkwardly, very strange, towards Gregory's direction and the mummies growled. It appears that something changed with the decapitation of that mummy. It seems that Gregory has lost control over the mummies. I made a roll to see how Corvus would react using the Game Master's Apprentice deck and I obtained the Stabilize Intact Portal. Corvus notices that Gregory's control over the mummies has destabilized and decides to leave them intact. He instead gets closer to the portal and begins hacking away and pulling off the hands that hinder his actions. Both mummies start attacking a terrified Gregory, who was fumbling to bring out something from his robes. A mummy tripped while attacking, quite clumsily, that is, it fumbled, but the other mummy ripped out Gregory's throat with its claws. Corvus watched with morbid curiosity as the three mummies dissolved in greenish goo, leaving only three puddles behind. I made a roll to see what Corvus would do now, and I obtained Sneak Rare Journey. Thinking this is a rare opportunity to sneak out, considering his wounds, Corvus decided to make his journey outside of the pyramid and report the death of Gregory to the mysterious woman he had made a bargain with. His return to the city was uneventful, he was taken care of, his wounds were tended, and the woman who now reintroduces herself as Natala is very pleased and offers to have her sages identify Corvus's potion, which ended up being a healing potion, which would have been useful in the battle because Corvus was about to die. I thought that he was going to lose humanity like in that time in the swamp. As Corvus recovers from his injuries, a group of wizards was sent into the pyramid in order to investigate the portal Corvus described and they also investigate Gregory's personal quarters. Although there were many scrolls and tomes that will take many months to decipher, these wizards found two objects of particular interest for Corvus' situation, one being a medallion. This medallion was being used by Gregory 
to open portals to other dimensions. That's where the green goo was coming from. Therefore, it is possible to use the medallion to transport Corvus to the place he came from. Natala also informs Corvus that a group of seers have found a human jawbone in Gregory's room that emanates the same deadly aura that Corvus emanates. They are certain Corvus is dead, not exactly undead, but closer to them. The jawbone will allow Corvus to teleport to places where similar magically attuned bones are, once he's back to the limbo from which he came from. After making preparations, Corvus bids these strange acquaintances farewell as he steps through a portal created by Gregory's medallion. But before leaving, Corvus traded his souls to Natala in exchange for two beautiful statuettes that are quite valuable. This is an insurance so that if he gets killed in the next fight, he won't be losing his souls and he will be able to sell these statuettes. Although he may end up getting less souls in exchange for the statuettes, it's a sort of insurance. So Corvus steps through this portal, something smells like burnt flesh. And this concludes this part of the campaign. I was actually really excited with this encounter. When it comes to the campaign of From the Ashes, and I will detail that campaign when I get to review the entire book once I finish this solo campaign, is that this campaign can get a bit wonky, a bit too loose in some of its aspects, so I took the chance to modify this encounter, this fight against Gregory, based on something I decided to implement in an encounter about seven years back. I was running a Labyrinth Lord campaign, and the players went into this area where there was this sort of like a cabalist controlling three golems. And these three golems, normally you see a cabalist or a necromancer or a summoner, some sort of caster that controls these beings. The first thing that comes into the player character's mind is to destroy the necromancer or the cabalist or the summoner, because that way perhaps the minions will disappear or he won't be able to summon more minions or control more statuettes or race undead etc but i actually applied a little twist it turns out that you actually need to kill one of these powerful minions because the caster is protected by an incredibly almost impenetrable barrier so this is a, a small twist on my part it worked great when i applied it to my players they actually were quite desperate trying to hack away at the barrier that protected the Cabalist, but it was no good, they had to run away. And only by returning, after healing up, they discovered that they actually needed to kill one of the golems. If you kill the golems, something happens with the uh, control mechanism, and the golems uh, break free from the control and they attack the caster. The spell caster is actually quite weak and is only able to control those minions because of, a, of an artifact. In this case, it was Gregory's medallion. But Abraham's method surprised me once again, with Corvus taking the somewhat correct choice, although he went immediately into the middle of the mummies, ensuring that they all got to attack him at the same time. I thought that he was actually going to die, but he ended up defeating one of the mummies, and you saw how things proceeded from there. Well. Thank you for watching this part of the solo campaign. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.